These are the psychology secrets you've never heard of that you can begin implementing today in order to blow up on social media, get that perfect partner, have your dream client relentlessly pursuing you, or simply just become the hottest, most confident, richest, sexiest version of yourself. But I feel like I have a lot to say, so this is gonna be a long one. Grab a cup of tea, grab a notepad and pen, and make sure you stick around to the very end because that's where it gets a little bit juicy. So the first and probably the most important one is the scarcity principle. Think of an emperor or an empress. They have an air of mystery, which gives them this exclusivity and elevates their desirability because not just anyone or anything has access to them. They are very delicate with their time and that gives them all the influence and all the power because they hold all of the cards. They're not just dishing out themselves to this person, that person, here, there and everywhere. Understanding the psychology of availability increases your value in anybody's eyes. There's only one of you. And so not everybody has the privilege to be around you. And this also ties in hand in hand with leave wherever you are not loved unconditionally. Remove that privilege of access to you immediately the second that you feel any disrespect has been had. Because if your presence isn't valued, then you value yourself enough to give them that absence and remove yourself from that situation. In any negotiation, the one that is willing to walk away from the table has all of the leverage. And everything in life is a negotiation. Whether you're with a partner, whether you're starting a business, whether you're joining a company, it really doesn't matter. We've just helped a client, by we I mean me, but I always say we. I've just helped a client manifest their dream job at Wells Fargo. They're going to be starting in September. Now we really worked on getting this person to understand their value, to understand what they bring to the table, to walk into that job interview as if they've already got it. And so they were willing to walk away from the table if necessary, if their needs were not met, because they understand that they are the emperor, that they are the prize. And so when you are willing to walk away from a table because you understand your power, you understand what you bring to that table, it makes you so irresistible, it makes you so attractive. And that's the reason why they're starting in September and I am so, so, so proud of them for getting their dream job at Wells Fargo. It's all very well and good removing yourself, being all up a tea and emperor and empress, but really understanding at the same time the art of engagement. So think about Kate Middleton from the royal family, right? She's really the only royal that sticks out in my mind that does this. And of course, there's such a wealth gap between the royals and everybody else, but Kate doesn't ever make the people around her feel like that. So she will go to her crystal palace, you know, her golden gown, whatever it is, but when she comes and engages with the rest of the world, she is warm, she is open, she is relatable, even though she obviously could never relate to any of the struggles that people go through, she continues to make people feel like that. And so it makes her a very warm character, even if she's not, even if behind closed doors she is not, it doesn't matter. She gives that impression that she's engaged, that she's interested, that she cares about the people around her, while also having that kind of air of exclusivity like not everybody deserves access to me but when you do get the access you get the best version so when you step out and you step into a room you are open you are warm you know gently touching someone on their arm or their knee or just being very warm and open very kind smiling all the time giving your best self so that when you do remain absent from whatever it is that does not serve you people only remember that warm kind version and remember if you haven't been that person we can change everything with revision so just revise any situation that you have not liked when you've gone out in public public maybe you've got a bit too drunk maybe you've made a mess of yourself maybe you embarrassed yourself you've done it many many times just revise it in your mind so that you change how you view what happened and then what happened changes in your mind. And then that sh helps you to show up differently in your next interactions. And this really brings me on to understanding communications. Now guys, silence is golden. But at the same time, it's kind of a juxtaposition, actively listening to what's going on around you. And there's two different scenarios that really, well, there's so many different scenarios that this can work, but understanding when to use silence 
makes you so magnetic and so powerful. So for example, ladies, we love to send a paragraph. You made me feel this type of way. You upset me in 10 different languages. You said this, this, and this, and you followed this girl, all of this, right? Do you know what's even more powerful than any word you could ever say? Silence. Drop off the face of the earth. And this is another thing about silence. They say in sales, I think it was Brian Tracy that said this, you say the, the amount, you say how much it is, and then you're just silent. And the first person to speak loses. This again highlights the power of silence and how important and imperative it is to know when to be silent, to know when to just relax and, and be comfortable in that uncomfortability of that silence. Because if you're constantly, I have to say this, I ha what if you just didn't say anything? At the right time, of course, you've already said your needs, you've already stated what it is that you want, you've already highlighted how you expect to be treated and it's still not being met, and you just sit in that uncomfortability, get comfortable in that, in that silence, and remember who you are and allow the other person to come forward and step forward. It makes you unbelievably irresistible and extremely powerful and highlights truly how confident you are. Also, just when you are having a conversation with someone, becoming the most magnetic person in the room, remember we have two ears and one mouth for a reason. So when you are at dinner, when you are on a date, listen, but actively listen. That's the juxtaposition. The silence is golden, but also actively listening. And by actively listening, we are allowing the space to understand and really truly interpret what the other person is saying so that we can then say it back to them in a way that they appreciate, wow, this person really listens to me. This person really hears me. And the more that you are actively listening, the more connected that person is going to feel with you, the more relatable you are to that person and then that's when they just open up the floodgates people come to me all the time not even just with coaching but i just mean in general in day-to-day -day life people are like i feel like i can tell you anything and that's because i'm actively listening but also using that silence that silence is extremely powerful yap yap yapping away telling people all of your secrets everything that's ever happened to you is only giving them the blueprint on how to hurt you or how to manipulate you or how to you know, make you happy in whichever way you want to look at it. But really, this brings me on to my next point, actually. Not oversharing. All the time, ladies, I think we love to do this. Go on dates, tell them about your ex that did this, your last person that did this, you know, this trauma that happened at five years old. We like, we need to keep this under wraps. Because if you go on a date, you say, this person cheated on me, this person did this you are automatically devaluing yourself in that person's eyes. And eventually you may be able to tell them if you, if you so wish, but it's really unnecessary to tell someone about all the pain that you are carrying. This is why it's so imperative to do all the work that we do on this channel, to love yourself, to heal yourself, so that when you do show up on this date or this job interview or this client conversation, whatever it may be, you're not bringing all of that baggage and you're not oversharing. And oversharing is really a sign of loneliness because you're trying to expedite that intimacy. Remember, into me I see. And so you're like, here is everything. Look at this and, and hear me about this and let me tell you this. And if I tell you this, then maybe you will tell me things and we'll be even closer. And you, you try and contrive that closeness by oversharing, by overgiving, overextending really because of that deep innate loneliness. And so this is really the time if you do find yourself oversharing a lot of the time or telling people all of your secrets and then they pull back, it's because you're not in that magnetic, irresistible, kind of fun, light energy. It's very heavy energy. And so work on loving yourself, approving of yourself, all of the self-concept stuff that we do on this channel to stop that oversharing and actually become truly irresistible in business, life, and in love. And once you have done all of that work and that inner work and loving yourself and approving of yourself and truly liking yourself, this is when that confidence skyrockets. And no matter what anybody thinks of you, no matter if they agree with you or not, no matter if they like you or not, you like yourself. 
And this allows you to be authentic. Now, being authentic, I think, helped my channel, my YouTube channel to grow. So when I began to be more authentic, be more confident in my message, in my delivery, and began to be more myself, sometimes I swear, sometimes I'm aggressive, sometimes I gesticulate all over the place, that is my authentic self. And so when I started to do that, I found my tribe and now we have this incredible House of Vibrations community which I'm so proud of. I love you all so much and seeing the comments, seeing you guys cheer each other on, seeing you guys cheer me on, seeing you guys cheer yourself on when I say an affirmation and you repeat it in the comments and you're telling me your updates. It's, we've created this incredible community because I was I was gonna say brave enough, <laughs> but I don't know. I don't know if being authentic is brave enough, but I would because I was authentic. And once you are authentic, once you put yourself out there through confidence, you can be your, th your authentic self and your tribe will find you. Your people will find you. Your clients will find you. I have people literally begging to work with me. I'm like, let's just not keep the money. I, I want you to keep the money. I don't want you to spend your last bit of money to work with me. I, I genuinely don't want you to do that. I genuinely want you to just do the work yourself. And people are still wanting to work with me because of that authenticity, because of that confidence that I emanate out. And this just spills out into every area of your life. When you don't care if someone doesn't agree with what you say or someone doesn't think that you're beautiful or someone doesn't, whatever it is, you, you think you're good enough. You think that what you have to say is of value. You think that what you bring to the table is enough. That's what the most important thing is. When you have that confidence, you have that authenticity and that authenticity makes you extremely irresistible, extremely hot, confident, and it will even make you a lot of money. And something else that will make you a lot of money is being multifaceted. Now, when you go on a date with someone, when you you know go to a job interview, whatever the case may be, yeah, they want to know about you know what you do and your skills. But even in job interviews, like, what are your hobbies? What do you like to do? You know, who are you as a person? You will find that it's not usually the hottest girl or guy that's the most interesting person in the room because they don't have to be multifaceted. They just get everything, right? But when you are multifaceted, when you have a plethora of interests, when you're also passionate about what it is that you enjoy doing, for example, my friend's boyfriend, he's into tech. And she's like, he's such a nerd. I love it. He comes home, he tells me about all of his day at work. She has no idea what he's talking about. But it just, that passion just oozes out of him because he's multifaceted. He can talk about her things, but also when he talks about his work, he just lights up. And so what are you outside of your work or your hobbies or what do you like to do in your spare time or what are you learning to do? What, do you, what, are, you knowledgeable about? what are you knowledgeable about? Because when you are passionate about what it is that you're knowledgeable about, knowledgeable about, that makes you so magnetic, it's so irresistible. You just see someone across the table from you, their eyes are lighting up about what it is that they love to do, what it is that they're interested in. They want to teach you and, and tell you about it and bring you in, it's so interesting to them. And that makes you kind of like, oh my God, I'm so passionate about this person. Remember the mirror neurons, we end up mirroring what we see. And so understand the next time when you are so passionate about you know, manifestation, maybe spirituality, meditating, psychedelics, whatever the case may be that you can teach someone else about, you're instilling that passion into them. And then that then motivates them to feel more passionate about something. Wow, this person's learning French. I want to learn Spanish, whatever the case may be. Just remember that your interests are interesting to other people, especially when you're passionate about them. And speaking of passion or lack thereof, I was just in New York, don't know if I mentioned it like 500 times already, and I went on this date with a guy who had his own plane and he took me around the Statue of Liberty at night and, you know, the Manhattan skyline and it was extremely beautiful, like breathtaking, and it was such a beautiful, beautiful experience. Now, what I want to touch on here is, is directed at the ladies, and I did a video about how I became the woman of my dreams. Everyone jumped off a cliff in the comments and said, how can you say women should never work? I never said that. 
not once did I say that. And if you can find where I said that in the video, please tag me. There will be a prize for the person that can find that in that video. Um, and the reason why I never said that is because of this exact scenario. So when I was in this plane with this guy, you know, we were coming to the end of the experience. It was, it was unbelievable. But as we came to the end of the experience, I felt an expectation in the air. And now let's say I didn't have my own resources or, you know, my own shiny objects or my own things going on. Maybe would I have been impressed by this and would I have felt compelled to then go home with him and, you know, do whatever with him. I guess we'll never know, but I can definitely see how in that scenario, if I had nothing, if I, you know, was very impressed by this person because of all the shiny things and I didn't have much going on in my life, how I would have felt compelled and also the the air, the, like, the energy in the air was very like, okay, now we, you know, go here. I would have felt like, oh, okay, well, he's done this. So like, maybe I should. And so this is, I don't know. I don't know. We'll never know. But the point that I'm trying to make, when you have your own resources, when you have your own things going on for you, when your table is set, baby, listen to me. When your table is set, you're not impressed. It's very unimpressive to me. These shiny things, take away the shiny things. Who are you? Who are you? What are you actually bringing to the table? Because ladies, let me tell you, there is nothing that a man can give you, not one thing that a man can give you that will ever be more than the life that we breathe into them during that sexual exchange. Because that life force that they receive from us gives them the power to go and work, to go and make money, to you know go to the gym, to go and protect, provide, whatever the case may be. They literally receive life force from that sexual exchange and we are left depleted and this is why it's so important to keep your resources up to keep your standards high so that you're not impressed by these things you're not impressed by you know whatever this person has because you can get it yourself you can do it yourself whatever you have I can get for myself you can do it yourself and then when you do find someone that is worthy of sitting at your table and creating a table together Yes, that, that energy exchange, that beautiful exchange creates more life, more babies, more whatever the case, whatever it is that you want to create, it creates more of that because it's an equal input, it's an equal exchange. But when there's one side that's taking more than the other, that's when the, the female especially is left depleted. And this really ties into you know, sexual energy. And I, we, you ca we cannot talk about irresistibility without talking about sexual energy. We are sexual beings at the end of the day. And so as females guarding your sexual life force, like your life depends on it. Not everybody deserves access to you, to your body, to your magic. I was just in New York. <laughs> getting my hair done and this this guy was doing my hair he said you've made my whole day and not to like brag or like be like all mm, but he was just saying like a beautiful woman will like he's like now the lady that's gonna get the blow dry after me she's gonna get the ble best blow dry of her life because you've just made my whole day just from your smile I know he's Italian they're very extreme whatever I had no makeup on I you know whatever but it's true, like even just showing up as you are, as beautiful as you are, showing up how, however you desire, however you choose to be beautiful, that is sometimes enough for a masculine man, not a feminine man, for a masculine man, for him to give you that safety that we as women crave and desire. And for the man watching this, being that irresistible, masculine, god tier man, you have to ask yourself, is there anything else that you have done besides your own desire to sleep with this woman that would entice her to want to get to bed into bed with you? Because a lot of the time, men in particular mistake their own horniness as enough for a woman to want to sleep with you. And unfortunately, it's just not the case. But let me tell you something. There's good news for everyone involved. Women, women, are the most sexual creatures okay out of the two 
when she feels protected, provided for, safe, secure, you know, loved, all of those things, you'll get put through your paces as a man, okay? I don't know how it works if you're into um, same sex, so I can't really speak on that. But I'm saying this is obviously not a one size fits all as well. So we're talking about men and women being together. I don't know the other way, but let's just use that as an example. So as a man, for you to remove your own horniness away and decide, okay, how can I make this woman feel special? You know, it's not, it's a ve- it's very little things. Darling, the car is outside. Sweetheart, when you get to dinner, instead of, you know, here's the menu, baby, let me order for us, right? It's very subtle things. As a man, take lead. Can she trust you with her life, with her womb, if you decide to have children? Are you that god tier man she can put her trust in? And so these subtle things, let me take your coat, you know, like if her shoes, undoing her shoes after a long night out, that's so intimate, it's so masculine, it's so, you know, she feels so taken care of, like doing all of these things, because it shows that you're interested in her, and also everything we've just spoken about on this video, that quiet confidence, that authenticity, using that silence when it's necessary, but also actively listening, and saying the, their words back to them, so that they understand that you're listening, you know, thinking about what they're doing and oh you need to go get your nails done it's expensive to be a girl you want to be a with a beautiful girl you need to spend some money as a man so you're going to get your nails done here's 200 dollars. that's how much it is now you're getting your hair done i don't know about these girls but i'm paying thousands for mine because i get extensions so really you have to understand what your woman needs anticipate those needs and I'm not talking about splashing all of this cash because just like as an example with this guy who had all of this cash he was extremely unattractive to me because he didn't do all of the other things and we could have done we couldn't have not gone on the airplane ride he could have done all the other things made me feel safe made me feel secure you know like uh, anticipated any needs being a gentleman And maybe I would have felt, you know, more enticed to be nearer to him or to see him a next time or whatever the case may be. But because those things were missing, automatically you're unattractive. You're very, very resistible. I can resist you quite easily. In fact, you get nothing from me. Goodbye. And so really just understanding your behavior, your words, how you're making other people feel, and ultimately just being a good fucking person will make you extremely irresistible, will make people want to be around you. Another thing, I told you this video was a long one. Another thing is compliments. This is the last one, I promise. Um, This is the last one. So another thing is compliments. So, you know, to, to give a good compliment, you need to understand who that person is. And not just who that person is. Like, for example, if you see a beautiful girl, you say, wow, you're so beautiful. She's heard it 300 times today right? It's not that hit. It doesn't hit that hard, right? But let's say, you know, someone is, someone values their, they went to university, they got a PhD, you know, they scored all, scored the highest in all of their tests, and they really value their academics or, you know, being smart, being intelligent. You could say you're smart. They'd be like, yeah, I know. Or you could say, I was so impressed by how you conveyed those complex ideas in such a concise way. And you had the whole room hanging off your every word. How do you do that? Where did you learn that? It's incredible. That speaks to someone on a soul level and it makes them know how this person knows me. This person knows me. Remember guys, ladies fall in love with what they hear and the men fall in love with what they see right and so that's why when you're giving compliments don't just be like you're so cute you're so this wow you're so whatever like really comment on someone and show them that you know them and you appreciate what it is that they appreciate about themselves as well at a core level and this takes some time but these compliments and not to get something out of someone either you know you can tell when someone wants something from you And you can also tell when someone's just being extremely genuine. Like, for example, someone said to me on my video, um, 
I hope that every time, and this is another thing, I compliments really don't work on me. I think because I'll get one comment that says you're amazing and then another comment says you're you're a horrible person. So it's like who do I listen to? It's like oh, me. I listen to me. So I validate myself. I'm self-actualized. I you know I like myself. So what you say doesn't really matter. But one of the things that someone said was I hope that every time you look in the mirror you're in awe of yourself because of who you are and the magic that you bring or whatever they said. And I just thought that was such a beautiful thing to say. And it really, that's one of the compliments that's really stuck with me. But this is another thing why compliments, typical compliments don't really work because people have heard it or people believe it about themselves anyway. So you have to understand how to really speak to someone on a soul level by listening, actively listening, holding that silence. So I want to know what you guys would add to this list. I feel like it's a comprehensive list. Maybe we can add more. But I trust this video helped you manifest. You are worthy. You are loved. I love you and thank you.